Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NAGT webinar series. The NAGT webinar series is your one stop shop for strengthening work in earth education. Webinars in the series feature novel and innovative work in earth education, research and pedagogy, new teaching materials, and the classroom and professional experiences of people like you. The NAGT webinar series is free and open to the public, and we encourage you to invite your friends and colleagues to attend and join the discussion. Uh, on the screen is a link to the webinar series where you can find the schedule, an archive of past events, and information on our sponsoring projects and programs. You can also find slides, resources, and recordings of each webinar through those archives. Uh, before we get started, please take a moment to review the Zoom controls on the screen. Uh, during the first portion of our webinar today, we'll be doing a presentation, and during that presentation, we ask that you leave microphones muted and cameras off. This will help us get a good recording of the webinar. Um, if you have questions and comments along the way during that portion, you can enter them into the chat box. Um, to find that, you'll have to find the Zoom control bar and click on chat. Um, after that presentation portion, we'll be using some breakout rooms, and at that point, by all means, please um, unmute yourselves and turn your videos on if you're comfortable doing so. Uh, a reminder that all participants in NAGT meetings and events are expected to abide by the NAGT Code of Conduct, which applies in all venues, events, and online forums associated with NAGT. Uh, please read the full NAGT Code of Conduct policy, um, which I've linked to in the chat, and we'll do so again um, for any details on that. Today's webinar is titled Navigating Life as a GUR Student or Interested in Becoming One, Getting Involved and Networking in the Community, and is presented by Zoe Krieger from Northern Illinois University and Larry Collins from Washington State University. Zoe and Larry will discuss opportunities for geoscience education, education research students to become involved in both GSA and NGT and will facilitate some time uh, for networking among the group. Uh, thank you both for participating in the webinar series, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, Zoe and Larry, go ahead and take it away. All righty, I will get our slides going for us. Okay. All right, so Mitchell gave us a quick introduction. So uh, when we get started, we're just gonna give you a little overview of what we're planning on doing. So we'll give you a little more introduction to who Larry and I are, the requirements for our positions that we are going to share with you guys today, pros for deciding to get involved with the positions and with these organizations in general, and then kind of a timeline of when to be looking for these positions to come up and available. And then we're gonna have some breakout group time and we have some prompts that we're gonna suggest for you guys. All right, Larry, if you wanna go to the next slide. But before we get started, we want to know who we have in our uh, Zoom audience or group with us today. So if you are already a current GER grad student in the participants, uh, box. So if you click on that participants box on the bottom, there's a yes and a no. So if you're a current GER grad student, click yes. Um, if you are not a current GER grad student, but interested in it, click no and leave them up for a second so we can see. And then if you are just here to kind of learn and more about GER and kind of potentials of getting involved, you leave it blank just so we can kind of see the participants we have. All right, so kind of pretty even spread of people, three people, looks like I have three people interested in kind of getting to know more, three other grad students, and then three potential grad students. Awesome. So we can move on to the next one, Larry. Oops. You can get rid of your yes and no's now if you would like as well. Um, so I, as Mitchell said, I'm Zoe Krieger. I'm a PhD candidate at Northern Illinois University. I got my master's at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln and a BS from Marietta College in Ohio. Uh, my research focus within geoscience education research is on spatial thinking and misconceptions related to sedimentology and stratigraphy. 
Um, so I'm really focused on the spatial cognitive side of primarily oil and gas geology. Um, and then I am the graduate student liaison for the National Association of Geoscience Teachers and their division of the Geoscience Education Research. So if you're not familiar with NAGT or if you're not a member of NAGT, I highly suggest you check out their webpage. We have a QR code up there for you that'll take you right there. Um, it's a $35 student membership. If you get a lot with it, you get access to the Journal of Geoscience Education and you can choose to be in one of the three divisions. I do think it is a $7 additional fee to join a division if I'm correct. Um, and they have the Geoscience Ed Research the two-year college and the teacher education. And so with these, you end up getting, if you join the geoscience ed research uh, division, you get on a monthly listserv that has um, potential postdocs, potential graduates, school openings, job openings. It also has literature that is new and relevant. So you can kind of get a lot out of these communities. So I highly encourage you check them out if you have not already. Next. So what do I do as the graduate student liaison? Um, overall, it's a really fun position and it's not a huge time commitment, but you do have to attend one monthly meeting. Uh, they're an hour in length. We typically have had them on like Friday mornings. They've been not very, they're not long. They're very easy. They're very strict to keeping to their timeline because um, it's mostly faculty members who are very busy. Uh, you're expected to plan two meetings or events related to the graduate students per year. So this is gonna count as probably the only one I'll end up doing in my first year. Initially, we were hoping to do one at the EER and one at GSA and 2020 took a different route for us. So that did not happen. Um, additionally, you do have to attend the NAGT division meeting at GSA. Um, there are ways to Skype you in, but you do have to have that time available even if you do not actually attend the GSA meeting. And you have to find one graduate student a semester for our division spotlights. So each month, along with our NAGT uh, division newsletter we send out, we do a spotlight of somebody in the community. And so we started this year to try to spotlight new graduate students. And so we, our first one is um, Patty James from Michigan State. So if you use that little QR code at the bottom, you can actually go see our past spotlights. And so we try to focus on graduate students who potentially might be graduating or do something really exciting um, and get them kind of publicized in the community. So also if you're interested in doing one and you're a current grad student, reach out to me. I'm looking for people to do this. Um, and then you kind of have other responsibilities that pop up here and there. So this semester I made an EER social bingo card. So if you're not, I guess some of you guys might not be um, clear what the Earth Educators Rendezvous is. It is a conference specifically for geoscience and earth science teachers and educators and education researchers um, hosted by NAGT. And so at this conference this year, since it was all virtual, we were trying to find ways to get some more social interaction going. And so we started a EER social bingo, that you, or social media bingo. And then I've also worked to create uh, the QR code. It might be, it's cut off a little bit on my side, which might be why. Um, if I'm correct, we'll post a link to the serve, or to the um, PowerPoint afterwards and you should be able to access them there. Yep. Uh, yeah, awesome. Um, and this year I also worked with one of the other members to create a uh, graduate student emergency fund knowing that this year lots of people who have had um, lots of different financial issues and lots of curveballs thrown at them with graduate funding over the summer. And so we created a graduate student emergency fund and I worked to design that and the application form for that. Generally speaking, I really spend one to three hours a month on this. So it's really a pretty low time commitment. All right, next. And so why, 
would I want to tell you guys about this position and want you to get involved. Um, first off, one of the reasons we hosted this is because Larry and I have gotten some interest from people asking about our positions, uh, what we do, how to get involved. And so we wanted to kind of have a place that people could learn more about that. But also I think that just a generally really awesome opportunity. Uh, first, I've gotten to work really closely with members of the GER community from people who are traditional GER researchers to people in faculty development positions to people that are in non-traditional science ed positions working at museums. So I've gotten kind of a wide breadth of what jobs you can have with GER and that's been really awesome as well as just getting to work with this variety of people I wouldn't have gotten to work with. I also get a say in our community. I got to vote on what I thought were our top priorities and the direction for the GER community within an NAGT to go. Um, so it's nice to kind of get a say. I've also learned that sometimes the faculty forget about the graduate students and where we lie and our needs within the community. And so it's been a really nice place to be able to kind of speak up and say, here are some needs that I'm hearing from other grad students here. How do I, we help and how do we make sure we're not being forgotten within our community? Um, it fights imposter syndrome. Uh, so I tell people that I first got on this and I was like, oh, I'm so scared to say anything. I don't want to look silly or I feel like I'm not qualified to like have an input. And over time, I've realized that like my input's really important and it has been really appreciated by the community and by these people I like really respect. And so it's really helped me kind of realize that I do belong in the community. And so I think it's a really great place to kind of fight that imposter syndrome. And honestly, it looks good on a CV or a resume. I recognize we're all graduate students. We're all going to be looking for jobs. And that is part of finding a job is having things that look good and build your resume. And so it looks good. But mostly it's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed this. I've gotten to know people and meet people and learn so much that I would not have gotten to learn without this position. All right, so I think and now I'm going to hand it off to Larry to talk to you guys about the GSA positions. Great, wonderful. Thank you so much, Zoe. And so my name is Larry Collins, and I'm at Washington State University currently in the PhD program in science education. And I am super excited about formative assessment strategies. So my research is actually focusing on, well, how do we actually design meaningful experiences of um, argumentative writing and integrate those into lectures for students so that we can build an understanding of the scientific process and also stronger content knowledge within our students. And so Zoe is, um, is working pretty closely with NAGT. I work pretty closely with GSA or the Geological Society of America and their geoscience education division. And so in our division, we have two graduate student representatives. And actually I should correct myself, you do not have to be a graduate student to have this position. It is also open to undergraduates. And so in this role, um, you can basically join GSA. We have a variety of divisions for you to um, available to you. Sedimentology, um, paleobiology, there's numerous ones you can choose from based on your own specific interests within the geological sciences. For me, I'm obviously in the geoscience education division. Your first division is free. And then if you want to join a second division, you pay whatever that division charges, which is only usually around a few dollars to join that division. Your membership comes with a lot of things, just like what um, Zoe was saying with NAGT. We have a lot of professional development available for graduate students, including geo careers events. And then also you can join the geographic section. For me, I'm in the Cordilleran section because I live in the Pacific Northwest and then also your division of choice that you would join to, which like I said, for us is geoscience education. All right. So a lot of my position mirrors what Zoe does with her position too. So we attend meetings. We also have some responsibilities where we're giving um, you know, our, our own voice to some decisions that are being made within the society. And so what you're required to do as a graduate student or undergraduate student representative in GSA is to attend the annual meeting. Um, and we even offer travel stipends for students um, 
for some, for those of um, those of you who rather are traveling to the meetings when it isn't COVID times. And secondly, we also have a larger student advisory council. So in that student advisory council, you are required to attend those meetings, which they only meet twice a year, once at the annual meeting and once during the spring semester. And during those meetings, that's when you really get a chance to voice your own concerns and provide suggestions for how student members can best be supported. And all of the members of Student Advisory Council share a report with GSA's larger board, so then we can share that information with the folks um, who can help us get those things happening within the society. One of the biggest responsibilities that you also have with this position is for those of you who are not familiar, we also have two awards that are division awards every year. One of them is the Biggs Award for Outstanding Undergraduate Earth Science Instruction. And the other one is the Totten Award for Research. Now, the Totten Award for Research is an award that is given every year in the past. It has been primarily for people who are faculty members. And so you as the graduate student would serve on that committee um, with other people from the management board. So in this case, um, people like Kelly Lazar from Clemson University and Liz Petrie from um, Western Colorado University are two people who serve on that. And it's headed by Julie Labarkin. And so um, your role on that is to just help us collect um, the sheets at the annual meeting and also to um, basically provide your own voice and uh, input on, on how that process unfolds to make it go as smooth as possible. We also have division board meetings. And I would say that our division board is like the group of the five or six of us that are on it right now are always supportive of each other we always help each other out and it's a very collegial environment regardless of who you work with because the people who take on these roles are people who are super motivated and they want to put um make our make our community better and one other thing that we do is sometimes it's really it can be nervous um nerve-wracking when you're entering a new position especially in a professional society you may not know exactly what you're supposed to do so we actually have mentoring for our student representative so for example, this year I mentored the new student who just came in and then she'll switch into outgoing representative at the annual meeting, which is later this month. So again, similar to what Zoe was saying, there are numerous pros to being a GSA student rep. And so one of the ones that I really like the most is just networking because you get to meet so many people who have a different variety of careers. Some people say when they graduate, I know I still say this myself, what am I gonna do when I graduate? You get to meet people who have a variety of careers who can share your, their pathways with you. That's one thing. Um, another opportunity to list service on your CV, that looks great to people, especially if you're entering faculty positions where service will be a requirement. It improves your self-confidence. And in this case, you're able to offer new ideas, you're, you're able to network. And one thing I will say, we don't have hierarchies in our community. So everyone treats each other like we're at an equal level. And that's something I've really grown to appreciate. And so um, not a very huge time commitment either. With, between the few meetings that we have per year, similar to Zoe's position, maybe about one to three hours per month. And so not, not a terribly huge time commitment for the busy graduate student. So we also have um, some information to share with you on the timeline. So when should you look out for these positions to be opening up? And so the timelines actually mirror each other pretty well for NAGT, for Zoe's position that she was chatting about and for the positions um, that I was chatting about. And so usually around April or May, we'll have an email that will come out. And we also post it on our division's Twitter site as well um, and our Facebook group. Um, calling for nominations for um, a graduate student representative for GSA. And so GSA has two openings that usually come up um, every year. And so our position for mine, which is graduate student representative, we have an incoming self nominations and also nominations from other people are welcomed every year. And then GSA also has an education committee and so their education committee is separate from the geoscience education division. And that's another opportunity for where you can serve as a student representative. 
And some of the things that we do on that in that position are we talk about some of the best ways that GSA can support our K-12 teachers. Um, that was a big thing that we talked about in our last meeting. And another thing that we also do as well is we try to figure out what are some of the um, what are some of the strategies that we want to use in the next um, in the upcoming five to ten years to help promote more people be interested in geoscience education. So some pretty important conversations happen um, within that committee. And so the elections, we don't waste very much time in getting the person appointed. So the elections will happen usually around June and then the transition into that new role will take place at the annual meeting. So for, uh, for us, um, obviously it would be in 2021, which would be um, the meeting after this one. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're gonna give you all time to interact with each other. And so we have some breakout room prompts to help generate some discussion amongst you and your colleagues. And so what we're asking you to do, and these are some suggested prompts, and then you're obviously also able to elaborate on them in ways that you would like in your smaller groups. But please share your name, your preferred pronouns, your institution, and what your interests are in geoscience education research. So, you know, like the second prompt says afterwards, you know, what inspired you to come to this discipline? You know, you, you, you must have some sort of reason that got you to want to come here. And then um, also, what are your future goals and how might this community actually be able to support you in those goals? And I'm gonna let Zoe go ahead and explain to you that third one, the high-low buffalo. I have to unmute myself. Um, this is something we started doing with my lab group because someone's friend does this with their five-year-old for bedtime and she thought it was cute and so we tried it and we really liked it is we do a high and a low of buffalo so here or in a buffalo so here would be thinking highs lows of grad school and then a buffalo is something random or funny or unique that you want to share about so um, we would do this once a month and one month my buffalo was that I learned how to make a didgeridoo out of PVC pipe so it can really be anything just something kind of random that you feel like is interesting to share or might be something that other people relate to in the group. It also prevents you from always ending on a bad note, so. Um, I have put the prompts in the chat, so when you are put into your groups, you should be able to see those as well in case you forget. And again, this is just some kind, some guidance for these groups if you would like them. Uh, we do want everyone to make sure that they do number one and share who they are. And with that, we can do the breakout groups.